Hi there! Welcome to Post Call Gaming Streaming. Thanks for tuning in and joining us as we have some laughs and fun while we go through our favorites, new and old. Uh, you might be hearing a little bit of echo. I'm trying to fix that right now. One month sec. And there we go. All right. No more echo for me. Uh, so, <laughs> welcome back. I'm Dax. Tonight we're going to be streaming some more Octopath Traveler, which we haven't touched in a while, but it hasn't been that long. Uh, if you're catching us on the YouTube archive and you like what you see, hit the like and subscribe buttons below to see all of our latest streams and videos. I am joined tonight by my great friend and co-host, Aero. Hello. How's it going? Hey, Aero. Good to have you back. There is still a little bit of echo. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing it. It's weird. I'm trying to figure out why that's the case. There shouldn't be any echo unless OBS is doing some monitoring of our uh, stuff. I think that should be fixed, so we should be okay. I can hear you on... I can hear myself on your end, so I'm wondering if maybe that's partially where it's coming from. But I'm not 100% positive. But we'll figure it out as the stream goes on. I think the echo's gone. I'm going to mute you for a little bit. Sure. I'm going to switch back to the game here for a sec. We're going to switch back to the game. Perfect! We've figured out some audio issues with time. <laughs> it's taken us a while to get here, but we are finally here. You might hear a few seconds of echo. Oh, look, your audio is not getting picked up in the stream. One sec. Let me fix that. Let me quickly take a look here. It's really weird. Um, say something just for a sec. That's why. You are now on the stream. <laughs> I figured it out. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're on stream. You're on stream. It was because on voice meter I had forgotten to tune oh, you. Oh, there I am. To, yeah, into the output. Uh, everybody, in case you haven't been hearing him so far, Aero is on with us tonight. I'm so sorry that he was not included in the first couple minutes of the audio, but we are back. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. It's been a while since we've had you on. Now I think. Just a little bit. I missed the last stream. I was busy, but uh, it's good to be back and uh, seeing what you, what shenanigans we've been getting up to in Octopath Traveler. Well, it's funny because the last couple of streams has been with PW. We had another stream where we needed to use the Yoshi sound effect, which is really funny. <laughs> mm. But we are back. Um, so last time we left off, we were finishing up uh, Tressa's story quest. Basically, we had figured out some evil people were trying to steal something, and we beat them to a bloody pulp. And now we're going to try to pick up uh, where we left off. We kind of abandoned the cutscene right as it was about to run. And uh, you should probably <laughs> go back there and resolve that now. Okay. Just picking up some items here. And now it looks like we're going to run into a cutscene. Looks like we're being brought somewhere with our good friend Allie. Interesting. So, Aero, it's been a while uh, since we've had you on, and because we're just going to probably be stuck in a cutscene heck for a while, it's probably a good time to do a little bit of handover, because we haven't done a handover for some time. Well, not too many stories to talk about today, because the weeks it's been a quiet week. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, we were celebrating uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, which is very similar to American Thanksgiving. Woo! <laughs> Aero, what did you just do to celebrate for Thanksgiving? I, did, I, I stayed home, and I played games. <laughs> that, that sounds like Canadian Thanksgiving in a nutshell. <laughs> that sounds like Canadian Thanksgiving, it does. Please help us, you won't disappoint us. Um, so, just looking over the news stories, you know, a couple things popped up over the weekend that I thought would be fun to talk about. <coughs> whoa, 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 hold on, Dax, what did you do? Oh, uh, I just had dinners. I did the same thing, I stayed at home. I did not do as much gaming. Um, anyone who was tuning in on the stream might have seen, like, a couple of uh, streams of Vaporum. Which, shout out to Fatboy Games, because they've actually been liking all of our tweets about the streams that we've been doing, surprisingly enough. <laughs> I don't know how they found us. Today, I brought something very special to me. But it's been a fun Thanksgiving, a lot of turkey. That's cool. A lot, a lot of turkey. 
Oh, that's see, you had turkey. I didn't even have turkey, so you had a better Thanksgiving than I did. What did you have? I, I just had regular dinner. <laughs> didn't really celebrate it much, so I had regular dinner. Regular dinner sounds wonderful. Yeah. After three, three, two, two days of turkey, two days of turkey. Oh, that's like two more days than I wanted. I wish I had two days of turkey. <laughs> uh, it, it just worked out such that I was at a lot of places that were serving turkey. Sounds delicious. Someone who traveled across the world wrote down everything about their journey. So it looks like Tress is selling her notebook that she's treasured for most of this game. I guess she's trying to give it to that young girl over there. Telling her to spread her wings, go on her own adventure. So yeah, we were about to dig into Handover. Uh, first story of the night. Um, I don't usually like to start any of our podcast episodes on a downer, but I think it's relevant to talk about uh, that The Walking Dead final season. You guys might remember that not too long ago, a couple episodes ago, we were talking about um, how Telltale Games are shutting down. And it seems like the creator of The Walking Dead is now actually stepping up to take over the final season of The Walking Dead point-and-click adventure game. Um, this is Skybound Entertainment, who's basically said that they've entered into an agreement with Telltale Games. It sounds really scary. I don't know what this agreement means. Uh, but supposedly, they're going to hire the devs from Telltale that worked on The Walking Dead um, to basically come in and work on the final season, which recently had episode 2 come out. And Skybound was started originally eight years ago by Walking Dead's creator, who is uh, Mr. Robert Kirkman, um, and apparently now has an arm for video game development, which they call, you know, Skybound Games, because why mess with the formula? Um, the other interesting thing is that as kind of part and parcel of all of this, uh, Telltale employees have actually filed a lawsuit against Telltale um, regarding the firings and the mishandling. So it's, it's kind of an interesting situation where the creator of the property is stepping up to take back his property to make games on his property. Hmm. It's very interesting just to see the news of this stuff bounce back and forth. I mean, it's kind of tragic. There's been a lot of buzz and discussion about kind of how the Telltale game shutdown has been handled or mishandled, depending on your perspective. I think it's interesting that the uh, developers openly stated that they want to take on Telltale developers back to develop the game. I think that's a nice story. I don't know if you've seen any of the horror stories on the internet yet. I definitely have not. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there's been talk about how one employee had literally just been hired and moved halfway across the country um, to basically work at the company and then they got fired a week after. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, not a not a great story. So, Aero, I know last time we talked about how like you, you've never really uh, played any of the Telltale games before. I mean, is this motivation to pick them up? Because now we're gonna get a, an actual conclusion. Uh, definitely. It's definitely along those lines. I would be interested in picking up uh, a couple of those games and checking them out. They definitely seemed interesting, uh, and I just never got around to playing them, so... Does she have any idea where it's, it's, yeah, definitely I would try it. It's kind of interesting, because I don't know if you've ever seen Life is Strange. Yeah, yeah, I've played Life is Strange. Oh, okay, so then this is, this is where I want to get into it, because I've recently been following the reviews for Life is Strange. Life is Strange 2. And so I was going to ask you, what do you think about, you know, like Life is Strange, I feel like if you look at Steam right now, the reviews are overwhelmingly positive. Um, do you think, and, and the sales for Life is Strange supposedly was enough because now they've come out with uh, Before the Storm, which I think was a prequel, and they came out with Captain Spirit, which is kind of like an interquel. Uh, I haven't played the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, and just to clarify, you've never played any Telltale games, is that right? Yeah, I've never played any of the Telltale games. I mean, yeah, I haven't. Would you say, like, in terms of your experience of Life is Strange, why don't we talk a little bit about Life is Strange? I, I've always wanted to talk about Life is Strange on this podcast because I wanted someone to convince me to play Life is Strange. How would you sell it to me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, wait, so 
Why do you want to play Life is Strange? I've heard so many good things, and uh, I've played a couple Telltale games. I feel like the only Telltale game I've liked is The Wolf Among Us. Um, but I've wanted to get into Life is Strange because I heard the story was really good. And right now it's $20, and I need someone to convince me to spend $20 on an adventure game. I see. Uh, hold on, give me one sec. Um, hmm. Life is strange. Is you play it for the story, right? So you have to really. Hmm. Uh, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts. I'm seeing how I would convince you to play Life is Strange. I personally played it, and it didn't blow me away. I pr definitely would not have given it an overwhelmingly positive uh, <laughs> rating. I mean, I think it was very good. I think the aesthetics were well done. The story is pretty well written. And overall, there's like a very interesting thing there. But you know how whenever you deal with a story that tries to sell you the butterfly effect concept? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can only get so far without doing things that you've seen before, right? Like the first time it's like, oh, that's really cool. That's interesting. Once you see it a few times, you're like, well, I've seen this before. Oh, yeah, that's that's how it definitely should happen and things like that. So I don't know whether you would enjoy it as much as other people have. So would you say like in terms of your experience, not a very interesting game, not something you would recommend to someone easily or? Uh... I think it's interesting if you've never played these types of games before. And I think if you had never played one of these games where choices are choices matter, then this is one of the games where you would pick up and you'd say, oh, this is great. This is very well polished. It's very well made and it's very interesting. And there's quite a lot of details and intricacies in the game. But then you get to other games where uh, what's the what's the new game? The one the PS4. Uh, the one where they modeled everyone's faces after like actors oh, and it's really weird. Uh, beyond uh, uh, something dawn. Yeah, I think that's the game that it's called. I can't remember what it's before, called now. Before dawn. Be, be, the I one think it's called before dawn. I I have to look it up. I don't know exactly what it's called. Uh, they have not come out with something after that. <laughs> is that what it's called? Well, no, it's not called before dawn. Until dawn. Until dawn. Until dawn. Until Dawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Until Dawn. So I haven't played it, but I've watched like a couple of playthroughs of it because I don't own a PS4. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think you would enjoy Before Dawn, uh, Until Dawn more than Life is Strange. So, I mean, the tragic thing is I've watched, I've also watched Until Dawn. <laughs> so I've spoiled myself on Until Dawn. Okay, and what did you think about Until Dawn? I loved it, I want to say. Like you liked it, right? In terms of like what it has to bring, what it has to offer. And if you were in that scenario where you were making the choices, you would have really enjoyed it, right? So I feel like Until Dawn is a game that ideally, if I didn't know anything about, I would have played it with you guys, like all of the post gaming stream team or clinic team. And then we would have basically role played each of the different characters and run through the oh. game. <laughs> yeah. Because that's how I watched it. Like I watched a group of guys and uh, one lovely lady play the game. And it was kind of really funny to watch each of them take ownership of the character uh, because uh, they, they would start yelling at each other. <laughs> that's really funny. I watched like uh, one of my favorite Mario Maker streamers play it and I watched someone else play it in which they made like all the worst decisions or all the, <laughs> all the really bad decisions. So they would fail all the quick time events. <laughs> Oh my god. And you'd see that the game actually forces you through some of the quick time events, but obviously they're depending on the event there are some repercussions that come out yeah um but it's really funny just to see the different uh things that happen yeah i mean one of the ideas pw actually recently brought up was um i actually own super mario party one of the things we want to do is have all of the post call gaming stream clinic come down uh, and play mario party locally because we think that would be really yeah. funny yeah that'd be great but um, yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, the reason why I'm asking you about Life is Strange is because uh, as any of our audience members probably knows, anytime I'm asking about a game, it's probably because I'm thinking like, is this a good game to stream on post-call gaming? Uh, and I think Life is Strange would be an interesting one to stream. Oh, Life is Strange would be a good game to stream. I mean, a lot of people have already done it. It's a, it's a great game to stream. I don't know how much you would enjoy it compared to some of the other types of uh, 
sort of choices matter type of games. Mm. I don't personally think, like personally for me, it was an overwhelmingly positive game, but I could see why it was. Like why it would resonate with people. Yeah, yeah. Like it has a good storyline. It like uh, the story is about it, it. More or less is about friendship and about like how your choices, your, your actions can hurt others. But um, you can choose to be selfless. You could choose to be a bit less, uh, more selfish, and all these other things. So there's a lot of themes in there. And of course, it's also at a pivotal moment in time for a person where they're in their teenage, high school years, trying to get acceptance, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. The story itself will resonate with a lot of people, and the story is well told. It's just personally for me, it's one of those games where you play it once, you're never really going to play it again, unless you're playing a second time to get certain achievements. I feel like that's kind of like minute. <laughs> yeah. Except yeah. minute probably is a smaller footprint, and it yeah. could probably cost less compared to like when like life is strange like life is strange when it was released it probably cost quite a bit but nowadays it doesn't cost as much yeah uh i gotta think about it i was hoping you would convince me but now you kind of got me thinking maybe not well i mean if it's on sale and you get it like it's a it I, it's a fine game to stream it it's a totally sale. fine game to stream. pardon it ain't on sale sadly <laughs> uh i have them but it's it is a fine game to stream Mainly because it's more so you in, like it's just about you playing through the story, doing the different things that you need to do, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. And the worst part is like it depends on how you break down a game because if you are the type of person, if you're the cynic that looks at a game and says, "Oh, it's just a game that's a bunch of fetch quests. Why would I want to play a game about fetch quests?" Then yeah. you're like, "Uh." If it, it's a game about walking around, going from point A to point B, and talking to people so you can initiate the next event. You're just like, does that really interest me? But sometimes you just gotta immerse yourself in the theme. So I think uh, Life is Strange does that very well. It does immerse you in the story. Uh, and there's a lot of great things about it. But I don't know if you, person you personally will enjoy it as much as maybe some of the other alternatives out there. Maybe in the future. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so that's the first story. I mean, it's great to hear that the developers who worked on The Walking Dead hopefully will get picked up and continue that game. Because I think if I have, just like Arrow, I haven't done a lot. I haven't played a lot of The Walking Dead series. But I think from a fan's perspective and a developer's perspective, those guys definitely deserve a chance to tell the end of the story the way that they intended to. And we're happy to play it for you if anyone wants to see us play. Happy to play them. Uh, moving on to the next story. Uh... The only other story that we're going to be talking about this week, it's been a busy week, so unfortunately we don't have that many stories prepped, but um, I don't, so, Aero, have you ever heard of a small little game by the name of Fortnite? Uh, no, I have not heard of that small <laughs> little game by the name of Fortnite. Is this the Fortnite that's spelled F-O-R-T-N-I-G-H-T? That's right! Uh, the one that was cancelled, uh, that was being developed for Squaresoft based on the Final Fantasy XII uh universe no no everyone knows which oh we're talking about. oh it's the game it's the game where you play through what is it 42 days yeah <laughs> uh so fortnite um you know latest baby child latest precious game developed by epic games um you know social media magnate um is creating a creator event uh which is actually starting this week the idea is that content creators who basically design stuff for Fortnite are going to have an opportunity for fans to earn money for them. Uh, in which case, what's going to happen is players are going to be able to link certain content creators to their um, Epic or Fortnite account. And every time that they choose to spend V-Bucks, the content creator is going to earn a little bit of real life money. Um, tags apparently in which the player links the creator last about two weeks. Um, at which point the player can choose either to renew the tag or pick a new person. Their definition of content creator is kind of interesting, lo interestingly loose. Um, Eric, what do you think they have listed under there? Um, I would assume content creator is primarily streamers, YouTubers, and yeah. anyone that sort of promotes the game. Yeah. So interestingly, that that's what I thought as well, and then I actually read the story and. Quote unquote, 
this is what uh, the apparently the definition of content creator falls under. So it's video makers in quotes, which is really funny. I don't know why it's in quotes. Streamers, storytellers, cosplayers, musicians, community builders across all regions, languages, audience sizes, and types of content. And I was like, uh, what's the difference between a video maker and a storyteller? <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I think there are distinct differences, but I'm trying to figure out what storyteller would be. In Fortnite, right? Mm-hmm. Unless they're talking about, like, because I know with Fortnite, there's lore all littered all over the map. But it's like, are they telling me that they're going to hope for some, like, shoddy cast level podcast where people are like, you know... Like oh, this window's broken. Oh, I guess I guess you're right. I guess storyteller would be podcasters. I wonder. It's really strange. I'm really not sure. I'm wondering if it's like a lore podcast kind of situation. Hmm, it could be. I don't think it needs to be lore specific. I think the idea of storyteller it's just if you're making content but it's not video content. Yeah, that's a good point. Probably that's just the individuals that they're talking about. So, uh, the only thing, that the stipulation to this is, um, streamers, content creators have to apply through an event portal that uh, Epic Games is going to be putting up, uh, and they must meet the following conditions. So not just any average show schmo can sign up for this and make some cash. Um, the conditions are, the creator has to have created and released Fortnite content over the last 30 days. They have to have a thousand followers on at least, at least a thousand followers on at least one major social platform. They have to complete... Um, what's called the affiliate agreement and abide by Epic Games' creator code of conduct and they have to be capable of receiving payment in a form that Epic supports, which I imagine is probably PayPal. The mm -hmm. code of conduct that's described is very, again, loosely defined as good behavior towards other users in the game. <laughs> <laughs> which, in a game like Fortnite, is kind of like, uh... <laughs> I like to see what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird, but it, it's kind of neat. Like, it's an opportunity, I guess, for people who play the game to make some money. Epic is obviously making huge amounts of money off this game, so it's kind of cool to see them sharing the wealth a little bit with their audience. It's obviously also a marketing thing, but still. Yeah. It's interesting because when you have these types of events and you limit it to i understand why you would limit it to people who have at least a thousand followers on either different types of social media platforms mm. but with that type of stipulation you're looking at the individuals who at least have already put in time and effort to try to gather um sort of a following but as you can see like we've been doing this for example it's called gaming for a little while and it's hard to get a following we haven't done it for that long but it's definitely hard to get a following and even though I think that stipulation of having a thousand followers may be a bit more difficult than having streamed Fortnite or played Fortnite for 30 days. Although I guess the main thing with that is if they were other content creators from other platforms that decided to move into Fortnite, they would have that type of following behind them. And then as long as they played Fortnite for 30 days, then they're okay. So the interesting thing is, I think there was a, um... There was a thing recently, there's like a lot of discussion uh, throughout a lot of like Reddit and all these places that talk about how it's actually very difficult to uh, break into Fortnite streaming at this point, particularly because it's one of the games that's so popular that it's become exceedingly difficult to crack into it. Because you, I mean, you have so many other people who are doing the same kind of streaming that it's, it's Absolutely. really challenging to build a name for yourself, but it's kind of fascinating. I mean, I don't know, it, this is obviously, like, it, it's good guy epic kind of thing, but it's also obviously a situation where um, they're doing this to get marketing, they're doing this to get kind of advertising, um, but I don't know, a thousand followers, I feel like people generally say is doable i don't know as it's true like I, I see what you mean like we've been doing this for about a month now and we have uh 20 20 or so videos 21 videos on youtube we don't really have many people who follow us but i don't know it's interesting i guess i don't know i guess the way i look at it is more so are is this supposed to be an event that is helping you s promote 
um, these smaller content creators? Or is it just giving them a couple of bucks where they weren't getting them before? And that's it. Because it's not really a way to help um, lift up those content creators that have a smaller following to get a bigger fan base. I don't think it's... I definitely don't think that it's meant to create advertising for the streamers. It's advertising for um, Fortnite. Hello. Yeah. And I feel like if you look at the the definition of content creator, like the, especially like with the definition of like cosplayers and all that stuff, I have a strong feeling that it's meant more to tap Fortnite into markets that they haven't reached. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So yeah, I, I don't think it's meant to help content creators. I think it's meant to tap into the kind of like the last few markets that Epic hasn't reached yet. It's a little unfortunate because once you're in this, you start seeing how difficult it is and you're like, man, I really hope other people succeed too. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so we've actually beat the game. The main game's actually done. Uh, did we? Yeah. Did, did that all, that's all it took for us to sell the notebook? Is Yeah, that was it. So we've actually <laughs> beaten the game. Like, this is all the characters' chapters now done. You guys can see if I scroll around the world map, there's no longer any um, green kind of check marks to tell us to go somewhere. But interestingly enough, I know there is a secret final boss. And I only know this because I have listened and watched some mild spoilers um, of content. And I don't know actually how to activate that post-game content. So... I'm gonna see. Thank you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to. I just checked the journal while we were talking to see if there's any like new story threads, but it doesn't look like there are any. Um, so I imagine it has to be like a quest that we need to start and unlock somewhere. Let's just take a quick break at this inn. But um. We may actually just change gears and switch games for a sec, because I don't, I kind of don't want to, I really love this game. I think Aero's heard me say this a ton of times. I actually really love um, Octopath Traveler. I think it's a fantastic game. So I don't kind of want to, even though ironically I've already heard spoilers and stuff, I don't want to look up a guide. So I think what we might do is I might just um, play this on my own, on my own time until I stumble across the stuff that triggers the post-game content. And then we'll pick it up from there. But I'm gonna switch games. Sounds like a plan. Quickly, because uh, we have 